what did we learn from the fight last night between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou? Well, I'll tell you what we learned. We learned nothing. We learned absolutely nothing. When the first fight was announced against Fury, everybody said and did, you know, Fury's going to take him out, blah, blah, blah. It's boxing, it's a different sport. And we all agreed. And Garno came in, and Garno came in and gave Fury a boxing match. And he put up quite a performance. Now, Fury had nothing to work with. And he struggled. He really struggled. But in the end, he came out on points. But he did get knocked down. Uh, but he came out, points win. Great. Understandable. Because he did do most. He did do more of the work. It was, even though Engano did put up a good fight, Fury did do most of the work. And I do believe Fury won that fight. Then Joshua's fought him and he's gone in and he's done what you'd expect a, a, a boxer to do against a person that doesn't box. It's his second boxing match. He's fought two, basically two world champions. He's lost both, one by points, knocked the guy down. The second, he's been destroyed. But nothing has been learned. We already know as boxing fans that this is the way it's well, this is the way it was meant to happen the first time. So we've not learned anything. The only winner out of all of this, the only one that's actually learned anything, is Francis. And what he's learned is levels. That's what he's learned. That guy. You've, you just can't help but love Francis Ngannou. Now, I've watched him throughout the years in the UFC, and he's a, he is, he is, he's a fantastic and a great man, and he's a great fighter. And obviously, he can bang, but it doesn't translate. It doesn't translate. When you've got boxers grow up and learn how to use the fists, the brain, movement they don't have to concentrate on certain parts of the body whereas in Garnu, he's just learning how to use his fists properly not to say he can't use his fists because he can but you understand what i'm saying he's learning to use them only where he doesn't have to think about are they going to kick my leg are they going to go for a sweep are they going to go for a clinch are they going to go in and take me down all that kind of stuff he, and he's he's, a, he's on a, he's on a learning curve. Now, me personally, I think he's a de he, he could be a decent boxer, and I think he just needs to go in with a couple of because I see I'm seeing it in money bells. I'm seeing money. That's all I'm seeing for him. And I think he needs to just go in with a few lower end guys. They put him in the. They put. They give him a rank in the top ten, which I thought was ridiculous, but they did. And I think he needs to fight a few lower guys down. He should stay in boxing because that's where he's going to earn money. He really is, and I reckon he'll pick it up very fast. But the point of this video is just to say basically what did we learn, and we learned nothing. And the way Eddie Yearn keeps going on about Anthony Joshua is now the baddest man on the planet. No, he's not. Because let's get one thing straight. And Garnu may have been lying on the floor like that. But once he stood up and he was undazed, if a real fight broke out, Garnu would <laughs> still, still literally just tear, the, tear Anthony Joshua to pieces. He literally would. There's no, there's no, there's no doubt in that, in that fact. <laughs> and Garnu is still the baddest man on the planet. Anthony Joshua is a fantastic, a great boxer. But if it comes to it and he starts getting kicked in the legs and kicked in the head and elbowed and picked up and thrown on the floor and twisted up and your arm getting snapped or your neck getting choked out, it ain't going to work for you. Now, congratulations to Anthony Joshua. We put on a spectacular performance. But again, I will repeat myself. 
we didn't learn anything that's what should have happened and for all the people thinking that this is some kind of turnaround for Anthony Joshua I, I think you're wrong he's had four decent fights and he's won them all but this was not a challenge this really wasn't a challenge he's gone in there and done the job yes there was the risk that he might get punched in the head and we know what that his chin isn't the greatest now i'm not one to say you know I, i'm not a boxer per se but you know i just don't think we learned anything but congratulations to him but the only winner is Engano. i'm just glad he got 20 million quid for that then good on him just good on him i'm just happy for him i really am now when it comes to anti joshua fighting fury i think fury had a really bad time against Engano. but anti joshua i don't know how to put how to put it in words um Listen, there's levels. You've gone against the guy that is just learning the art. You thought he might be a little bit of a challenge, but he wasn't, as expected. You've cleaned him out. Good on you. Well done. But if you do fight Fury, that's a totally different ball game. Now, I want to point something out about Fury. Now, I the other day I talked about respect. Now, when it comes to respect, as I said in the other video, there's two kinds of respect. There's respecting a person respecting what they do and i don't like anti joshua as a person i don't like fury as a person but you've got to respect what they do and how good they are at what they do and i totally respect that and respect them as men for that but the thing about fury is you'll notice throughout his career he has really bad awful sometimes awful fights but he gets through him just about but whenever Fury comes up against an actual proper challenge, for some reason, some I don't know how he does it, he pulls things out the bag. He really does. Now, Anthony Joshua isn't the same, you see. When Anthony Joshua goes into, Anthony Joshua goes into deep, deep waters, I mean, against Klitschko, he kind of did. But it was an older Klitschko. Uh, Dillian White, his first fight with him, he kind of pulled it out the bag then. Um, but since Ruiz, he, he's, he's not been the same. And I just, if he does fight Fury eventually, he's really going to have to pull some out of the bag because I know for a fact Fury will turn up. He always turns up for the big ones, annoying as it is sometimes. Because I do love him. I, I love them both as boxers, the British British lads, aren't they? So, you know, you got to love them. But i tell you who I was impressed with. I was impressed with Parker. Every fight that guy, each fight like you see when when Parker was originally, I think he was uh, was it WBO? I think it was either was it the IBF. He was the champion for one of them. You have always saw him as like a top ten fighter, and I don't know what's happened to him over the last couple of two years, but by God, he's coming on good. He's getting better and better as time goes on. And last night he was fantastic. I know he got knocked down a couple of times, but he is getting better and better to come through that and still win. He, he's getting better and better. Well, that was just this is just my opinion. It's not it's, you know they're not facts. It's just me spouting. But all I wanted to say was, did we learn anything? And the fact of the matter is, no, we didn't. We didn't learn shit. We learned that a boxer, two time heavyweight, can knock out. Uh, not a boxer <laughs> that's basically all we learn but congratulations to them both i hope they get paid let's move on to fury Usyk because that's going to be a battle i think fury as i said just two seconds ago will pull some out of the bag because he always seems to on these massive occasions he pulls stuff from out of his backside and um, but we will see love you and leave you and i will see you in the next one don't shout at me it's just an opinion